what's going on guys welcome back to another episode so we are back over at the i guess we do we really call this the new property the new property the new property uh where all those baby niles hatched out so we're gonna be doing a quick little crock chow feeding today and showing you guys how those babies are progressing oh, so the babies are doing awesome you know you, you can see don't don't give me this i don't know if the camera can pick it up but i think we can see that. okay good but that's what's awesome is like you can see one right there just on the uh, wood pile and they are quite the sun worshipers they definitely go from there in the morning to here in the afternoon when that sun moves so it's a great little area um i think it's very safe you know especially with birds with the fencing right there they can really tuck up underneath there and uh, obviously nothing's getting in here there's electric wire around the whole perimeter fence so no raccoons are coming in so the only predator they really have is birds and even them between the fence and the two amazing parents i'm not worried about it at all um but you know that's that's uh it's also the wild here per se and that you know whatever happens happens but uh the babies are doing absolutely awesome their their parents are doing amazing and i think they have um, a very good chance at getting much much bigger in this enclosure and that's what i'm excited to see is just how big they're going to get and now before we get into feeding them you have what do you think like 11 in here yes 11 in here and then we collected some eggs and hatched yep. those out so how about we go take a look at those babies how about we get to feed first well, let's take a look at the babies we'll come back and feed okay we got to leave here yeah all right fine we'll leave here drive over to the other place and then come back and feed whatever ryan now with pulling those eggs what's crazy is they hatched out like five days later so you know that's what i don't get is like you'd think especially with animals that have uh caring parents that always are you know around and looking after the young that you'd think they'd hatch out you know relatively the same time period but these guys definitely were not ready and you can see they still have a big fat belly unlike those ones in the pond so these guys are definitely younger now i don't know maybe she laid a second clutch uh just a later clutch the, the reason the um they hatch later but what i'm doing now guys is i'm just pulling them out again do another health check um you're releasing then, them into florida <laughs> yes no letting them all go cleaning Let the, them be uh, free cleaning the water out because the water's getting a little gross it's um, kind of hard to see them on here i'm hoping the camera picks really? it up well yeah that's cool they, though they came they blend right in you got a good old pile of niles yeah so they are doing awesome and i wanted i want to kind of compare these guys we're going to raise up here and compare to the size of the uh of the babies in the ponds now i'm also uh subsidizing their food over there with crickets throwing them in there twice a week uh, but they get minnows they can get minnows all the time but these guys once they are ready because you can see these big fat bellies they still got a lot of yolk sac to absorb uh, but once they start you know really losing that then they'll be ready to eat and we'll start pumping them for with pinkies and and all sorts of stuff see this one has a short little snout look at that look how short his snout is all right ryan you watch over them while i clean this all right all right so now you got them all cleaned yep and putting them back in he said there's 11 right there are 11 so like i said 11 in the pond 11 in our care see essentially you got 22 of these little guys yep and what's your plan with them so uh, niles are critically endangered species so we're going to be doing reintroduction programs with them um, into the wild here in florida you know they've only found there's only a few left in the wild in florida they've only found like three left so it's 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 it's, it's, it's dire it's it's extremely dire so these guys will be released uh right right in the backyard uh in a couple of years it's so right when they're about you know three foot they're really established We'll release I mean, them you have back. the river right there, so you put them in there. It's going to be great for kayakers to go by. They're going to really well, see some some Nile crocodiles. They'll see conservation at its finest. <laughs> now, for the people that don't get the satire in that, <laughs> uh, these are not going to be released here no. in Florida, and nor are they critically endangered in the wild. No, and what's what's <clears throat> going to be cool is to see all these. Um, so we're definitely going to be doing a test as to the gender, you know, because we don't know what the incubation temps were, but if, once we determine the gender ratio. We will be able to determine um, roughly the temperature that they were uh, incubated at. But these guys will always have a forever home here. Uh, we will be getting, obviously, you guys see the sanctuary we're building, but then we're going to be buying a ranch in, you know, less than five years and have hundreds of acres there. And honestly, I'd love, I'd love Niles. 
so essentially I want to um, you want to kind of replicate a, huge... a Zambezi River <laughs> you know what's a, the uh, Mara River in uh, in Florida and we're back at the new facility just like that so now we're gonna go feed the adults croc chow uh, not to say that um, the parents will eat the babies but let's just make sure they're nice and full so that is never uh, a thought in their mind. But as you can see, both parents are doing an amazing job at raising these babies. Um, and still nothing from the trio, but we'll get into that. We'll feed the pair first, and then we'll get into the trio. So the only problem with this pond is one of the former employees decided to just throw fish in here one day when he was an employee, not to be like a disgruntled dump fish in here, ha ha ha. No, he put cichlids in here, but the problem with that is they ate a ton of the minnows. So there's probably, you know, maybe a quarter or a fifth of the minnows in here as there are in the other ponds. And the issue with that is obviously the baby crocs would eat the minnows. So um, we definitely, like I said, I definitely want to supplement it with crickets and whatnot. Uh, so I do crickets twice a week with little babies, but also they're going to find stuff. They're going to find, you know, bugs and what have you. He's so, ready for some food. You want some cocktail, bud? Is that cocktail again? <laughs> yeah. Even though last time was rats. He's picky. He likes his rats and rabbits. But he also likes his chicken. He likes his truck tail. Whatever you call it. There you go, guys. So that's what I love about the feeding platform. You just pour it right in. Yeah, this is easy. It's so easy. No babies coming over here to check it out. They're just like, ah, we'll let you guys do that. Well, look, you can see they're actually cruising around. They hopped yeah. off. So most likely is they're just nervous because the parents left and they're worked up so they don't know if it's they're protecting or they're feeding you know that's my guess at least so the safest spot for the babies is the water sorry guys i should have brought it over to the shallow side. and there's a decent amount of minnows in there eating the croc chow yeah. uh, as well yeah there is a decent amount of minnows so not to say there's not but i mean let's go over here and just as we're talking about it. This is not right. Are they all on land? Yeah, he's right there. Uh, he's coming over? Okay. How many minnows? A lot. There are a lot of minnows. Yeah, look at them all. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot more than those. So, do you think these guys are going to have babies or what? So last week we got in here to put the covers on the drains. Um, she, that female actually came in and I dug up her nest. Her eggs don't look good. Um, they look like they've had too much saturation and either they just weren't fertile from, to begin with and they just got destroyed. Um, but they do not look good. I mean, maybe there was one steeper. I didn't have time to look at all of them, but um, definitely don't look good. So the question is, is hers. I didn't look at hers. She is a very protective mom. Um, and we'll see if she's gonna have babies soon. I will say I walked over there and it smelled like rotten eggs. Over there? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Well, that's not good. It's not. So. Especially cause there's eggs over there. Good eggs? No, especially oh. cause there's eggs oh, over yeah, there. Oh yeah, I think they're rotten. Yeah. So you can see all the minnows. There are a lot of minnows. So. Well, what do you think would uh, fix that issue? I mean, you don't really Get want to. Get rid of the fish? I mean, the only problem is, is now, I mean. No, the, the egg issue. Oh, how do you fix it? Yeah, you can't really fix it off. Maybe just collect them. Obviously it works. Yeah. You know, we don't need to collect them. You know, we don't, you know, obviously she laid them like in the exact same area she did uh, in the enclosure. So same level, same soil content and whatnot. Um, just honestly could come down to fertility. You know, these animals were just put together early last year. So maybe they didn't have a, um, a viable breeding season. Yeah, viable um, courtship and and locking up. He's like, uh, "What are you doing? We got food up here. Uh, I'm gonna go away." So what I've noticed with a lot of people keeping crocodilians is they uh, they do a 
way too varied of a diet. You know, obviously varied diet is great, but you know, I've noticed a lot of people that, you know, are used to feeding, um, you know, only mice to some cer to certain reptiles, all of a sudden they get into crocs and then they're feeding just everything like octopus legs and all sorts of like saltwater fish. It's like, I'm gonna say that's too much. You know, stick to kind of what, especially with a Nile crocodile, you know, they're never going to be experiencing that kind of stuff. Saltwater fish, you don't want to. No, so I think that. I think you know, as long as you're doing a pretty varied diet, you know, I'd say at least you know five different elements. So you know, they get fish in here, they get the croc chow, like I said, the multivitamin per se, the supplement, um, rats, rabbits, sometimes chickens. guinea pigs, chickens. So I think that's a very good diet. Um, but once you get into like crazy stuff, I think it's over the top, you know. Um, but what I do like about croc chow too, is not only does it feed the fish, it also is great enrichment because it's not just a, a slam with the with a rabbit and then they're full. It's, they really have to work for it and it's just, you know, it's good for them to just be active. And, and crocodiles are pretty lazy by nature for, for most of their life. So um, it's good to just be working like this. So it's, it's awesome. I mean, look at this. I mean, they're just cruising around and just chomping away at the biscuits. And what I would like to get bigger biscuits if they can make them, you know, like, like I'd say, maybe baseball size. That'd be great for bigger animals like this, especially like the big salties and whatnot. Um, so we, we got to tell Missouri, Missouri make bigger make biscuits. Bigger. Or we, <laughs> I guess we could make it ourselves where we get the, the gel and then just mm. make it, but. If they could make golf ball, or not golf ball, baseball sized ones, that would be absolutely awesome. Um, but also, like I said, it's great enrichment. These are not too small. Um, you know, where's the other one? I don't know. We got this, this is the female. That's the female from over there. Where did she ever come in? I thought I saw her come in. I, saw, I thought I saw her come in too. Where is the third one? Cause that looks like her. That looks like this female. Oh, yeah, they're all in there. Are they? How do You're we miss them? Underneath the... How do we miss them? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, here she is. Okay. Yeah, so I'm like, I swear, that's the female from over there. So okay. you got one, two, where's the third? She's under right there. All oh, right, then she's Coming third. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, there are a ton of minutes in there. Great enrichment, guys. You know, I... And again, it doesn't have to be crazy varied diets. Just pretty varied. Pretty well... Varied. We got some crocs feeding now. How about you say we go fulfill the rest of this video, which people have <laughs> been requesting to see your cars. So yeah, let's go take guess, a look at, I mean, that's that's the garage over there, guys. So. I guess it's organized enough to where we can go in there. Cool, let's go check it out. All right. All right, guys. So you guys have definitely asked about my car garage and thought we'd kind of, actually Ryan pressured me into doing this. No, um, we can talk about, you know, what, what all this is because it's all over the place. I'm all over the place with cars, with the quality cars, with the kind of cars, with the color of the cars. Just so you guys can get an idea of the size of the garage here. Yeah. So a little bit of everything. So 69 Firebird, uh, it's not a Trans Am. I'm not gonna lie and say the Trans Am is. It's a replica, but um, I, I like this one because the paint is way nicer on this one. Like it looks like a Trans Am, but you see the pearlescent, the blue pearlescent in it. And that's what sold me on this car. So this car, uh, we're gonna do a big block, probably a big block Chevy, uh, manual trans, just clean it up, new interior. Uh, yeah, that's that. That's my first old car, actually. Uh, I got the, actually classic muscle car. Then I got the 2015 Z28, 2020 ZL11 LE. Uh, I'm gonna put a Procharger on that, make that a thousand horsepower. This one is my baby. This one, I would, I'd sell every other car over this one. Let me see if I can get the hood open. And what one is this? So this one is a 2010 Camaro SS. This one is currently right at uh, 1400 horsepower. Uh, I'm gonna take the Pro Charger out, put a supercharger and twin turbos, make this about 1600 horsepower. So yeah. 1600, so basically airplane on wheels. Pretty much, yeah, pretty much. I mean, right now, when I get on it, it just blows the tires apart. As long as I stay in it, it's just spinning tight, and it's just a cloud of smoke behind me. So with that, we have to change the suspension a little bit. But that's that. So it's got a roll cage. I mean, that car, 
that car was is the car that started all this. The reason for all this is this car right here because I didn't really care about cars. I cared about ATVs and dirt bikes, uh, but then I got into cars. So this one has had three engines, three transmissions, three sets of wheels, four sets oh, of wheels. Turn around, turn around. Turn, stop. No, no, I'm yeah, serious. Yeah, yeah. Do what? I tell him? You might have a child who's on your shoulder. What? Where? Wait, do you see it? Right, right. Look. Get it off. Oh, oh. It's a wasp, dude. I'm just kidding. Like, holy shit. <laughs> like, that's a I, don't wasp. Even, I don't even know if that is a wasp. It's like, ah. It looks like the fake wasp. Oh, God. Yeah, that is a fake wasp. Yeah, it's a fake like, wasp. You son of a bitch. Well, once I realized it was fake, I was like, okay, I can, now I can mess with you. Okay. <laughs> back. We're back. Uh, 1997 Toyota Supra, gold package, uh, six-speed manual car. This is like, I'm not a collector car guy, but this is my collector car Supra. Um, yeah. And what's the, what's the appeal with Supras? Toyota Supra, I mean, it's a 2JZ. So it's an incredible engine. It sounds incredible. The cockpit's incredible. You know, it like wraps around you like a fighter jet. So um, I love them. I love the... So there's cars, there's a couple cars that I just cannot get enough of. Camaros, I got five of them. Supras, I got three of them. And Evos, I got technically five of them right now. Which so, this is a, This is an Evo. Evo. Yep, this one's a little, needs a little love, but we're gonna make this one a thousand horsepower. Why? So, why, why not? Why? The question is why not? Yeah. So you have a crazy supercharged and turbo Evo. Uh, this one is, only has 22,000 miles. So this is similar to what I had when I was younger. Um, so you got all these fancy cars in here and you got a Jeep Cherokee sitting right there. Are you kidding me? <laughs> let me let me teach oh, you yeah? something. Let me teach you something. You see this? SRT8 Jeep is a 6.1 liter V8. Uh, this is a 2010, the last year, the best year of the WK1. And it uh, has like I think 20,000 miles, so super low miles. So shut your mouth. Yeah. This shoot. the car I learned stick on. BMW. I got this at Barrett Jackson. This is my dad's. Uh, now we're getting the money over here. <laughs> this, yes. 2016 Copo Camaro 427. Put nitrous on it. Uh, ran 92 and a quarter mile stock. Haven't ran it yet, so we'll see what she does. I mean, that one's fine and all, but I'm looking at yellow Bumblebee. Bumblebee Betsy over here. So, I don't know what it is about Mercury Cougars, but... We, we mentioned this in the tortoise video, that you had a Cougar in the garage. I had a Cougar. This is my Cougar. This is my Cougar. So, and then you got that beast over there. That, that's... The, hey, they're Ron going up Burgundy. in value. They're going up in value tremendously. <laughs> yeah, they went that's up to 200 Cougar. bucks. <laughs> Screw you. <laughs> uh, okay. So, this is a 7600 mile Evo 9 MR. So this is my collector Evo. Again, I'm not a collector car, but this one is just like, I was gonna modify it, but it's 7,600 miles. Like this car is worth a tremendous amount. So that one will stay stock, stay in the garage and stay in. And then you got these. Now we're getting into some fun stuff. Okay. So this one's my favorite. This is my first supercar, 2017 Audi R8 V10 Plus. I got the Strauss carbon wheels on it. Uh, has a twin turbo kit on it. So right now it's making a thousand horsepower on pump gas. So we can crank it up. You see the two inner cores there. And then if you look back here, you can see the air filters in there. So that's the twin turbo air filters. Uh, but this is an awesome car. It's, a, it's, it's like a very expensive, expensive Honda with the twin turbos because it's like, you know, you get the V10, but with a, with a high revving engine, you know, you don't really have much power down low, so you have all this, so it's real slow. And all of a sudden, right when you get into boost, it just freaking falls apart. And you got this. This is the Porsche that I said I would get if I ever got Porsche, and I gave it. Now I have three Porsches. But this is a 2018 Porsche GT2 RS. So it is the twin turbo monster version of the GT3 RS. So this one is a torque monster. I like, what's funny is because I don't like electric cars because I just want to hate on them because I love gas cars. Uh, I love torque, which are electric cars. You know, you have that instant torque. But put a yellow roll cage in it to match all the yellow interiors that Brian just showed. 
This is an awesome car. I love this car. Uh, sounds awesome, looks awesome, and just basic bolt-ons, exhaust, a tune, a roll cage, stock wheels. Uh, I put the yellow on here actually, just to tie in more, and I think that's a cool element to it. Uh, this is my beater bomb. Uh, this is highlighter, as you can see why. This is 2018 Camaro ZL11LE. It's making about 670, uh, 670 horsepower in the tires right now. Just a fun, fun car. Then you got the everyday caddy. Everyday caddy. So funny thing is that car and this car has relatively the same engine. So LT4, this one's making 670 horsepower right now. Um, currently, stop. So. But you will change that, I'm well, well aware. It's an awesome car. I mean, I got the factory bronze wheels to make it look more aggressive because it is a Cadillac. You know, it's going to look mild. It's going to look toned down. Um, and on the older ones, they had the, the Vs, they had like a carbon hood bed that really helped accentuate the aggression on the car. But with this one, it doesn't. So I think the wheels help a lot. You know, you see all the carbon I got on this car. I ordered this car um, probably nine months ago. Now that we killed one battery, we are back. So baby bison, this is my daily truck. I uh, just wanted something that's simple, you know. It's, these trucks are just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And this is just easy to park anywhere. I don't need a crazy big bed. Um, it just works, but it's got a V6, so it's slow. If they put a V8 in it, it'd be much faster. You know, it'd be probably better at, uh, at fuel efficiency because it's working less. This thing's screaming all the time. Uh, but I want to do create. I want to make this thing crazy. So Ryan started talking about getting a TRD Pro or doing something to his. So I was like, no, 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 no. Okay, so, so you have to one up me. Yeah, of course. You have all of this. It echoes in here, and I go, hey man, I just want to get a nice truck. And you're like, no, I that. said you should, but <laughs> but you have to have a nice truck. Again, supercharger, gonna do carbon fiber wide wheels, uh, wide sorry, wide fenders, and then do a bigger tire on it. Yeah, make it more off-road ready. So mm -hmm. when we go out to Corbett, we'll have a competition. Um, so that is my- Little does he know, I'm buying the same truck, doing the same thing, but with a two inch higher lift. What? <laughs> yeah, you can't drive. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so this is my 2000, look at that. Don't wanna look at it? It's not the prettiest, I'm curious. It's a 2010 uh, Duramax diesel GMC. But put a twin turbo kit on it. So essentially, a stock turbo is back there, bigger turbo here, um, all sorts of exhaust components, uh, trans cooler, intercooler, uh, bigger injector, all sorts of stuff. So, this is an awesome, fun truck. That's making like 700 horsepower and about 1300 torque. So, that thing gets it. It is fun, it's fast. Um, but yeah, is that, but it's big. It's, so. it's big. So that's it, that's it, you know, not much. Not much, not and much. I mean, there are a few cars missing, so it's... Yes, there are. The McLaren 765 LT, there's the Porsche 992 Turbo S. Uh, we've got a couple cars in Pennsylvania still. So we're bringing some cars down, uh, set the Porsche up to Pennsylvania to race. So it's cooler up there, so cooler weather, faster, we'll see what it runs. Um, yeah, that's that it. wraps up the video. Do you want to tell them to subscribe? Oh yeah, Like, sure. comment. So guys, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and we will see you on the next one.